Hey, what's up? I'm Jay Moss, and today we're going to talk about the Howard Benson Vocal Plugin from Joey Sturgis Tones. Uh, this plugin is kind of like one of those all in one vocal bundles where you pull up one plugin, you have basically everything you need, and you just make your vocals hopefully sound really good. There's been plugins like this in the past, there's some that use AI, there's some from different cool producer guys, but uh, we're gonna take a look at this one today. I guess we'll call this a review. What we're not gonna do is we're not gonna read the manual, we're not gonna go over all the specs. We're gonna fire up a song, we're gonna put it on some vocals, and we're gonna turn some knobs and we're gonna check it out. And as usual, I am caffeinated as I'll get out. <laughs> Did I just spill? I spilled. Anything to get the shot. Anyway, let's dig into this plugin. Okay, well there she blows right there. Uh, as you can see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and I guess sorta seven different modules. Uh, presumably these are gonna operate linearly. I can't imagine we have the ability to click and drag. We do not. I don't really think that's gonna be a big issue. Um, as it looks to me from first glance, this is the order I would probably put them in anyway. This is gonna be our basically leveling section, if you will. We've got compression here. Looks like we've got a grit knob. I'm excited to try that. That's something I like to do typically outside of the box, but we'll hear how it sounds in plug-in form. Uh, general EQ shape, uh, one, two, three bands with a high pass filter. Ooh, and a lo-fi button. Oh, this button means you can do it before the compression. That's good, we like that. Uh, so this is gonna be for creating fake doubles. Uh, this is gonna be sort of stereo expansion. Uh, a lot of plugins do this, but great to have this right here. Here is our delay. This is probably like analog, lo-fi, delay throws. And here we can adjust our note value. Presumably this is gonna be reverb and this is gonna be an output trim. Okay, those are the modules. So let's uh, play some vocals. Let's turn some knobs, check it out. So just to keep things simple, I have all my vocals here. They are bussing to my vocal subgroup. Boom, the plugin is on that subgroup. So all of these vocals that you hear um, are running through the same instance of this plugin. Oh, real quick, something that's really awesome about this is no latency whatsoever. So you can totally use it while tracking. That's a huge benefit because you can get the performer sort of into the mood of the song and there's no weirds with like latency or performance issues or anything like that. All right, let's solo some vocals. Uh, I wanna check out this tube warmth button. I'd down by your first ever apartment there was nothing left but the memory of parties and fist fights that started that sounds cool i mean it's definitely subtle but i like it better with it on uh, and then the other thing i want to try is i want to try this grit knob down by your first ever apartment there was nothing left but oh that grit knob rules uh let's hear that in the context of the song because that's doing exactly what i hoped it would do Too old to be reckless. Awesome, let's solo that just so we can hear it. And too young to die. We're going out tonight. Actually, let me turn off all of these effects so we can just hear the grit. And too young to die. We're going out tonight. And too young to die. We're going out tonight. Yeah, if you push it too much, it gets a little rumbly in the low mid range, but it sounds cool. Yes, and too young to die. We're going out. That's awesome. Maybe a little bit less, but I actually really like that. It's kind of like a warmer distortion, um, and you don't always get that in the box, so I like that a lot. So just listening to these vocals now, we recorded these with an SM7. One thing I want to do is I kind of want to brighten them up just a little bit, but I don't want them to be too sibilant. I'm going to try to use this EQ section to see if we can do that. I'll probably play it in the context of the mix while we do it, so I can hear it comparatively like against the other elements of the mix. Uh, fingers crossed. Let's hope for the best. That's awesome. That gives it sort of that like uh, large diaphragm condenser air a little bit, but still retaining that like husky sort of bold rock and roll SM7 thing that I like. So that's working for me. I want to try this lo-fi button real quick. I have a feeling it's just going to make it lo-fi, which is going to be great for all the times you're in the studio and someone's like, yo, I have an idea. What if that was like lo-fi? Can you make the 
radio effect, that type of things. This could be a one button solution that you might already have on your strip to begin with. You could automate it. Pretty good. And too young to die. We're going now tonight. Yes, correct. That's what it does. Moving on. I've already messed with this a little bit. I'm kind of amped on this multiplier. Let's overdo it. Yes. And too young to die. We're going now tonight. Yes. And too young to die. We're going now. Yes. And too young to die. We're going now tonight. Yes. And too young to die. We're going. That sounds awesome. I've been doing this more and more. Like instead of doing the sort of slapback delay that has a bunch of echoes, just doing like that tighter, like there's more people, but they're not like ding, 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 like falling off into eternity. It's this tight, albeit like sort of synthetic, but when you blend it in, it sounds cool, like group thing. I like that. And we could add some longer delays or longer reverb after that, potentially if the song called for it. But I think that sounds kind of cool. A dab will do you there for sure. Things can get kind of phasey sounding, but that's nice to have. All right, the width control. Right away, this is awesome, this mono low end button. I know I'm gonna love this because I love keeping my low frequencies kind of in the center. So I have a feeling that as I turn this up, we're just gonna take the higher frequencies of the vocals, which we've already multiplied, so they're kind of wide anyway, and we're just gonna stretch them out a little bit further. This is another situation where you wanna be a little bit careful with your phase. Things can sound weird, unless you're doing it for sort of like a mood or a compositional effect. If you want this to sort of transparently blend into your mix, you'll know you're doing it right when you're like, uh, is that enough? But then when you take it away, you miss it. That's a trick, especially for me for effects that I'm gonna keep on like maybe most of the time. I want to like maybe like not really notice it, but then like miss it when it's gone. Too old to be reckless, too young to die. That sounds awesome to me. We're going for subtle effects here, but that definitely makes a positive impact. That width control combined with that multiplier could be kind of dangerous if you do too much. So watch your face, be careful, but it's cool. Okay, onto this echo module. I'm gonna turn this lo-fi on right away. Like I can already tell that I'm gonna want my delays to be more subtle in the background if they're at all. Uh, so let's start blending this in. Again, we'll go too far um, and then I'll roll it back to where I think it kind of makes sense. Too I think combined with the fact that we're keeping the low end in the middle with that width control, and then we're using lo-fi delays, we're sort of like compounding the same thought process here. It's like, we want the vocals to sound sort of pro and wide, but this is a punk record, so we're going to take our delays and take the things that we're making, like our production stuff, and we're going to sort of like make it a little less in your face and more tasteful to the genre, more or less. All right. Space. I wonder if this has been approved by the Space Force. Uh, this is gonna be reverb, I guarantee it. Let's turn it up. To all to and to young to die. We're going now tonight. All right, let's try that again uh, with the size down. Starting to sound a little better. Too old to be reckless and too young to die. Too old to be reckless too young to die. We're going now tonight. You lost that electric look in your eyes. Okay, and that's kind of it. And I actually can't of think that's the beauty of this plugin. I was chatting with another engineer friend of mine before I did this review and he was like, have you used it yet? And I said, I have it. And he said, it's awesome. And I was like, well, what do you like about it? And he was like, well, you can just make your vocal sound done really, really fast. I think that's what we're experiencing here. Now, you might want to spend a little bit more time tweaking than I just did, but the fact remains, you can just put this plugin on, you have everything you need, and you can very quickly adjust your vocal and get like a pro sound really, really fast. I think for a lot of people, that's what they're looking
looking for. Like they don't want to, oh, I like this plugin for this and I like that plugin for that. I mean, that's fine. I do that every day. I mean, I could totally see myself using this. Like who wants to do more to get to the end result? We want to focus on the art. We want to focus on the mix. We want to focus what's in our mind. So like, this is great for that. So with that, I am Jay Moss. Do I like this plugin? Yes, I do. I hope you learned something. Uh, I'm going to send us off with a before, after, before, after, that sort of thing. And I'll see you next time. Adios. Two, one, two.